Hey everyone, today I'm going to be ranking the classic Universal movie monsters. I just sat down and watched these movies. I had never seen any of them before. And, uh, you know, how old they are and how much I'm into horror movies, you thought I would have seen them by now, but I hadn't. And so I was really interested in getting to watch these. Um, I'm going to be ranking the movies more the monster, or more so than the monsters themselves. But I will cover, you know, what I did like about the monsters and uh, what I liked and didn't like so much about the movie. So um, if you're like me and you hadn't seen these before, I will be talking spoilers since these movies are so old. You know, most people that have, you know, seen or, you know, most people know about these movies by now. So um, we're going to get started off with my least favorite here, which is The Wolfman. Um, wasn't so much a bad movie. I just kind of felt it was the least interesting overall to me. Um, there were a few things I did like. I like Claude Rains is, of all these movies, he was my favorite actor in all of them. Um, and he is in this movie playing the father of the character who is the Wolfman. And uh, we also have Bela Lugosi in it for a very short time. He was the one who played Dracula. And um, what roles they played, they did really good. But I was hoping maybe one of them was, was going to play the Wolfman when it was actually someone else. Um, he did a good job, too. Uh, so it, it was interesting to see Claude Rains and Bela Lugosi play good characters instead of uh, the, the main villain, which they usually do play. Um, and I did kind of like in this movie how the Wolfman eventually was defeated. There was Early on in the movie, there was a cane that uh, the guy bought and... Uh, his name was Larry, and he's the one that turns on the Wolfman. And Larry buys this cane, and it's got the symbol of the wolf on it. And uh, it's it's got a wolf on, like, the top of the cane. And later on in the movie, uh, his father beats him to death with it. And I thought that was kind of interesting, that the thing that he bought, and he had earlier killed the original wolf that had turned him into, uh, you know, a werewolf. Uh, he gets killed with the same thing himself. And... Bela Lugosi is the original, like, werewolf in this movie, but it's, like, clearly just a dog. So you never actually see him transform, whereas you see Larry turn into the werewolf kind of slowly, just, like, they they have a picture of, like, you know, him getting hairier and hairier, and then eventually he's, like, dressed like a werewolf. Um, for the time, I thought that was fine. Uh, you know, it's, like, 1940 or something like that, so... Um, the, the only things I can I say I didn't really like was I found it kind of almost unbelievable how his him and his love interest get together. It's really creepy. So, like, he goes into the store. First, he, he sees this woman, like, changing through his, like, telescope or something. And he's so interested in her. He goes to her, like, pawn shop and starts talking to her. But, like, the way he goes about doing it was, like, really creepy and, like, he straight up tells her, he's like, yeah, I was watching you through my telescope. And, um, yeah, I, I don't know. It's just, like, he kept saying these really awkward, like, pickup lines. And it was just, like, I don't think that would have even worked back in 1940. Like, that was really just bad. <laughs> but um, other than that, I mean, yeah, there wasn't anything I straight up disliked. I just kind of thought that the movie wasn't as interesting as some of the others. Uh, I think most werewolf movies in general aren't usually that great the best one that i've seen which i've not seen american werewolf in london which is probably something i should watch or the howling i've only seen a few um and i and the, the best one that can come to my mind is the newest one the cursed so uh yeah this was just okay i probably wouldn't rewatch it out of all these movies most of these i, I probably will at some point watch but this one i just kind of wasn't all that into so uh, next at number six is Frankenstein. Now, um, the first half of this movie is pretty strong. Uh, I've got notes here, and I'll talk about, you know, those those things I did and didn't like, like I said. Um, the first half of this movie, I was like, actually, this is really good. And then kind of the second half is where I started to lose it for me. There comes a part where he escapes from his, like, castle. And uh, from there on, I kind of didn't really like it all that much anymore. But uh, we have Colin Clive playing Dr. Frankenstein, and he does a really good job. Now, I believe Colin Clive had died from, like, alcohol abuse very early on in his life, or maybe even shortly after this movie. I had watched uh, uh, Dead Meat's Kill Count of Frankenstein after 
uh, I watched the movie and I'm pretty sure he said something like that where that he had died. And so that was interesting to find out. Um, but this is also where we find Boris Karlov. There is like, you know, very infamous role or his most famous role, I guess I should say, when he plays Frankenstein or Frankenstein's monster. Uh, he does a great job. Um, and you can really see how like that inspires other monster movies. Um, and then this is the movie that brings about the It's Alive quote, um, which has been used for like many other movies and, and just different pop culture, like even Simpsons, I'm pretty sure did it. So um, the the quote, I believe, is It's Alive. Um, I know what it feels like to be God or something like that. And I believe, you know, that back then that was probably like a really big deal saying that he knows what it's like to be God or something. And so, uh, yeah, that probably back then that was like a really big thing saying that. And, uh, the other scene that was probably a really big deal was whenever he, Frankenstein's monster throws a little girl into the water and just she dies because she can't swim and he doesn't mean to kill her he just he sees her throwing flowers into the water and they're floating while he throws her into the water and she just sinks it was just like oh um I kind of had a feeling that's you know he was going to kill her on accident or maybe like the dad would come back and he would be there I wasn't expecting him to just be like here throw her into the water <laughs> but yeah um that was uh, that was kind of one of the scenes. From there on, I guess I should say, is where I started to not like it. It wasn't, like, right after he left the castle. But there's a scene where he sneaks into um, Colin Clive's character, Dr. Frankenstein, uh, to see his, like, wife. And he, like, he just does some really weird, like, cat call to her. It just was strange. I don't know. And he kills, like, all these different people throughout the movie, and he doesn't kill her. That was a little bit... I, I get probably why they did it. You know, they wanted to have a happy ending. Um, the other thing is they have... Frankenstein's name is Henry Frankenstein in this, but there is also a Victor in this movie. When in the book, his name is Victor Frankenstein. That was very strange. Um, the why they did that, I don't know. Just, yeah, throughout the movie, they kept calling him Henry. I was like, I thought his name was Victor. And then they called someone else Victor. And I was like, why'd they do that? Um, but not really a big deal. Um, <laughs> the scene where Henry is thrown from the windmill, it was clearly just like a dummy. It it looked kind of bad. I mean, it's 1932 or whatever year this came out. So I, I can't say it was like, it, it probably looked good back then. But um Still, it was just, like, funny watching that in 4K. Now you're like, wow, that's clearly just, like, a doll or a mannequin. They're just like, oh, it has no, like, life to it whatsoever. Um, I just thought that was funny. Um, and then kind of the way that the movie just kind of, like, ends was just, like, it, it felt like I was like, oh, that's it. Um, so after the monster, Frankenstein's monster, burns to death in the, uh, the windmill... Uh, Dr. Frankenstein is taken to like a hospital. We never see him again. So that maybe makes me think that that is maybe the time of which uh, Colin Clive died or something. But yeah, like you just see his dad outside and he's like, he drinks with the bunch of like maids or something. And then the movie just sort of ends. I was like, oh, that's it. Um, you never really find out what happens with him or his bride. Like, does he live does his, him and his bride both live or do they both die or you know what happens there you don't really know um but either way um there's still a, a good movie and i i really like the opening and like the beginning of the movie a lot um so as it went on i guess that that second half of the movie it just kind of slowed down for me that's all um so next at number five is dracula um this is bella lugosi's most famous role and you can really tell in this one where uh they've taken inspiration from this movie and turned vampires and and just dracula in general into like what they are now uh i had watched the uh, newest like netflix series dracula like about a year ago and you could tell just some of the influence from that and they took that story and basically um changed it a little bit modernized it and I thought it was pretty good, that new series, uh, other than the last episode, because it's only three episodes. But 
uh, the first two were really good, and you could see how they took inspiration from this movie. Um, you know, obviously, you know, you, you see some of the traits of, like, what Dracula is, where he just kind of, like, slowly walks around, and he does, like, puts the cape up, and things like that, uh, that have made him Dracula, and made that character what it is, and just that accent, like, even on Sesame Street, you have the Count, and he has that accent, and, like, I always was wondering, like, why he had that accent, you know, but it's because they, well, it takes place in Transylvania, I realize, but they, the, the, even, like, the accent, Bela Lugosi, that sounds Italian to me, so, like, they they have that, like, accent the way they, they have it, even in Sesame Street, so, yeah. Um, we also have Edward Van Sloan playing Van Helsing, uh, and I think he was a great opposition to Dracula. Uh, he comes up in one of these other movies, and I believe that's The Mummy, if I'm not mistaken, and uh, I think he was one of the better, if not the best in all of these movies, like, I guess, hero to the villain, and uh, this is probably the best where you have, like, a, uh, you know, like a, a villain. We have Dracula or an antagonist versus a protagonist in uh, Van Helsing, and I, I'd say it's probably my favorite, like, matchup in either or any of these movies. Um, and then we see, like, some of the set design of Dracula's castle was really nice, um, and there was a lot in this movie that I thought was, was pretty good. Uh, I just thought, really, why it was this low was mainly because uh, it was a little bit slow-paced throughout it, and it did keep my attention. I watched it straight through, no problem. None of these are very long, um, but... This one also kind of had a, a little bit of an abrupt ending. We have um, whoever Dracula was trying to seduce. I, I think it was one of the main characters' love interests. And he, like, frees her. Or he saves her. And they just kind of, like, after Dracula is killed by Van Helsing, they just kind of, like, walk either up or down the steps. And then it's just, that's, like, the end of the movie. And it was just, like, okay, that was, like, very out of nowhere. Um, but I feel like probably they don't have a whole lot of time back then whenever they were making these movies. And so both Dracula and Frankenstein were the first two. So I'm assuming is like, they don't have the, either the money or the time or something to make these movies have like a very, you know, I guess like fluent ending. And so they kind of just end and you're like, Oh, I wasn't expecting that. And uh, those are my really only two complaints, but this is a very good movie. And even from, uh, Frankenstein to Dracula, I was like, you know, they're, they're pretty even. It's just, I think Dracula, I enjoyed, you know, throughout it a little bit more where Frankenstein was early on. I was like, wow, I really actually like this. And it like my favorite scenes were in the first like 30 minutes of that movie where this was just throughout it. I was enjoying multiple different scenes. So, um, next at number four, we actually have, uh, the mummy. This is, uh, these are 4K, this is a Blu-ray. These other ones I couldn't find on 4K, so I just got them Blu-ray, but um, Boris Karlov in this plays The Mummy. I actually liked him a lot in this, probably more, because he has, like, speaking roles, and he plays um, more of, like, a villain, where in that, in Frankenstein, he's more of just a monster, and he's kind of almost brainless, and how, in that movie, I did like how he became Frankenstein, uh, I also like how he becomes the mummy in this. Um, so I think in that, I actually, I, I do like him more as the mummy, but I think he's much more iconic as Frankenstein. Uh, and one thing about the mummy is it almost makes me want to rewatch the one with Brendan Fraser. Cause I thought that movie was okay. Whenever I was younger, I had originally seen like the third one first and I thought it was terrible. The tomb of the dragon emperor or something. And then I went back and watched one and two, and I was like, okay, they're much better, but still, I'm not, like, a big fan. I still like the original Mummy more than those ones, but uh, I can definitely see the influence. And, like, the story is pretty much taken straight from there, just, again, modernized and has some changes. Um, I like how, in this, the Mummy was dug up in an arche archaeology dig or something, and... Um, there's some guy who, like, just insists that he has to continue on with this work, even though he's warned not to by um, Edward Van Sloan's character. And he 
you know, keeps going, and then the, the mummy comes to life and kills him. Or no, he, I think he just, I don't think he kills him. I think he drives him to insanity or something. And then he eventually like kills himself or he dies of insanity or something. And it's like 10 years later and one of them has a son. And now he's like the main character and his love interest is like been brainwashed almost by uh, the mummy because, um, or hypnotized, I guess is a better word. And she reminds him of his original love, which was the reason he had been mummified in the first place was... His love had died whenever they were very young, so he felt like he'd never had, like, a full life with her. And they believe in, like, a certain Egyptian god. Well, he uses, like, the powers of, like, the underworld or something, to, or a different evil god to, like, bring her back to life. But the, the ceremony was never completed, and because of that, he was found uh, to be, like, he's supposed to be executed due to like mummification or through mummification to, um, I guess punishment for his sins. And so he's mummified alive, left in a coffin. And then he comes back to life these years later, which I thought was pretty cool. Um, and seeing him, you know, he's, a uh, however many thousand years old, um, he's now 10 years later, he's kind of de aged almost, which was a little bit weird. He, his skin was like super wrinkly and bandageable. I guess he takes the bandages off and he's just, he's still more wrinkled than, you know, like you would be if you were young. But um, I feel like they could have had him a little bit more as the mummy because for a lot of it, he's playing like a guy, his like his name, like his character's name in there. Um, I can't remember what it was and I didn't write it down. But um, yeah, he plays that character more than the mummy, which that was... I would have liked more of the mummy, but I, I understand why they did it. Um, uh, like I said, Edward Van Sloan playing, you know, like the the opposition to the mummy was very good in this also. I, I do like him a little bit more in Dracula, but he was just as good in this. And um, and like I had mentioned, some of like the makeup was really good, like the, the wrinkles. But the, some of the scenes that were really cool is where they zoom in on his face and you just see his like eyes glowing and he's like memor or hypnotizing people. And, um, that was pretty interesting. And like the scene where, um, it's like him versus Edward Van Sloan and he's like trying to hypnotize him. The same thing happens in Dracula actually. And it's, it's probably better in Dracula, but it's, I think creepier in here. So the only things I, I guess, like I said, I didn't get enough mummy in this movie. And then this is just a minor thing. I just don't like when dogs die in movies and you don't see it. You just hear it. Um, but you know. That's that's really it. So um, next at number uh, three here, we have the creature from the Black Lagoon. Or actually, no, Phantom of the Opera. Um, this was the one with uh, uh, what's his name? Something uh, Claude Rains. I just drove a blank on his name. I knew it was a C. Um, this is the only one of these movies that's actually in color, which I thought was interesting. Um, I don't know if it was originally in, in color. I assume it had to have been, but um pretty good movie uh, it was a little bit too much i guess opera for my liking i realize it's the phantom of the opera but the opera scenes were going on for quite a while and that was really my only complaint about it it was like we had like 10 minutes straight of opera while there's like nothing else going on and i'm like okay like i know maybe you have to have opera in the phantom of the opera i knew that going in but it's like okay, I'm sitting here for like 10 minutes and nothing else has happened. <laughs> it's like, can we get to the phantom part of the opera? Um, but besides that, we have Claude Rains playing, I think it was Eric or Enrique, something like that. Uh, he does really good as the phantom. I still like him a little bit more in The Invisible Man, but he does very good in this playing more of a, uh, he does have kind of a, a psychotic side in this. But it's not as much as like the Invisible Man where he's straight up insane. And this is where he's kind of like, he's just, one. He's, he falls in love with this woman who is on stage. She's a rising star and he discovers her and he tries to basically, he like funds her to become famous. Well, he sabotages a bunch of other things in the play to get her to, into the spotlight. And once she's there... Uh, they basically are trying to push her out of it and he 
starts to go even crazier. He like cuts the chandelier down, drops it on. I don't know if it ever kills people. I don't think so, but it does fall in the middle of like the play while like, or the opera while they're, um, they're performing. Um, and like the setup of this was really good. It was like not, he doesn't become the Phantom for like a good half an hour. And I think this is probably the longest one of all of them. Let me look here. Yeah, it's an hour and a half. And I don't think this is the oldest, or I mean the newest of them. It's 1943, I think. Creature from the Black Lagoon is the the newest of all of these. But the Phantom of the Opera, um, it takes its time. So for like a half an hour, maybe even more, it's just him like you, you kind of getting his character and how like alone he is. He spent all of his money that he has made throughout his life trying to push this, you know, like help this girl because he's so in love with her. He then like tries to confess his love for her and he he's just so awkward about it. And she's already got two other like love interests and he he just doesn't know what to do. And then like whenever he writes this like piece of music for her and for it to be played and whenever he thinks someone has stolen his music, he goes crazy and he kills someone and uh, then acid gets thrown in his face and it burns that whole, I think it's this side of his face. And whenever eventually, for a lot of this movie, you don't even see, like, him. Like, you just see his, like, apparition or his shadow up against the wall. And then at the distance, you might see him with the mask. And then eventually, you'll see him up close, but still with the mask on. And you don't see him without it until, like, the last ten minutes of the movie. And it's just, like, this disfigured burn all on the side of his face. And I thought that that was really cool. Um... So, you know, like I said, we get all that good stuff. And if it wasn't for that, just long, elongated, like, opera scenes, like, you know, this movie would probably be just one above the next movie. But uh, opera for me, not my thing. And I like the story of the Phantom of the Opera and kind of how, like, this woman kind of has this attraction to him for some reason. And... Even though in this movie she doesn't, she's very fearful of him. She feels bad for him even after he dies because he gets crushed to death by I think like rubble, and um, she even whenever like she's with her two other like love interest, she says like she felt something for him, but it was never like a love type. It was more of like a sympathy type thing, which um. I thought that was interesting. So I don't think this was the very first Phantom of the Opera. I think this was like a remake and it was adapted by Universal. So I may have to like check out the original, but. Uh, and then next at number two, we have the Creature from the Black Lagoon. Um, this one I had seen bits and pieces of like a long time ago. And the parts that I had seen were like some of the slower parts, which actually this movie is not too slow. Um, and I think this was in the 1950s this was made and it's still in black and white, which I actually, I think it improves this movie being in black and white, but it would be interesting to see it in color um, just to, you know, see what the differences are. Uh, the costume and makeup for the creature is really good. Out of all of these, like that was the most impressive you see, like, the the gills, like, moving as he breathes, um, I guess, is, you know, because there's a 20-year difference between Dracula and Creature from the Black Lagoon, you know, you get, like, much better makeup, but, like, this was even impressive for today's standards. It was, like, man, just seeing, like, the, just the movement of the gills, and he's breathing through the mouth, and then, like, his fins are, like, it actually looks like fish fins and gills, and it was, like, really good. Um, the underwater fight scenes were filmed really well. Uh, it kind of reminded me of like James Bond's Thunderball. Like there's some underwater scenes where they're shooting harpoon guns. And in this, like the creature gets hit and he's like, you see, like he's bleeding and he pulls it out and, um, he, he like fights them underwater. And I think one of the more like underrated things in this, which I, I'm surprised I never heard about was they had like, when you're underwater and like you kick up dirt it's like the the screen just or, or i guess you like you can't see because there's so much dirt everywhere and like creek water river water or just any dirty water where in this it's like there's scenes where like they're fighting and they just kick up dirt and it like covers parts of the screen but you still see them like fighting 
and and then he'd like he'd swim away and hide and be like hidden in seaweed by this just like you know floating dirt and i thought that was kind of interesting because that makes it believable why they couldn't see him um uh also like the sounds that he makes it's just like very like fish monster like it's really interesting it's like he's half mammal like half amphibian and like he's making this just like really disturbing like like fish breathing sounds as if it was trying to breathe on land and it was kind of cool um the only like minor thing i didn't really like was that they have every time that the creature is shown they have this like musical like sting or this intro or whatever and it was just used constantly that was the only thing it was like yeah i get it it's like a really good actual like song or, or like little thing that they have but when they overdid it that much like every time he's on screen it's it's there and it was like a little much but uh, besides that i actually really enjoyed this movie um i bought the t-shirts for after this i went and got um off of redbubble i got creature from the black lagoon shirt and then my number one which is the invisible man um i bought a shirt a t-shirt for that and so like i said my number one is the invisible man and now, I don't think this is the best of all these movies, but it's my personal favorite because of Claude Rains, and he inspired Mark Hamill's laugh as the Joker. His laugh in this movie is, is like, one of the best laughs I have ever heard, and I just, I've, like, listened to just, like, that scene where he just, like, laughs is straight up, like, it's enjoyable to just hear him just do this, like, evil, maniacal laugh. I thought it was great. Um... And some of the special effects in this movie for 1933 where, like, they show him... They've got, like, four different shots overlapped into one scene where, like, he's standing there and, like, his... Uh, it, it's just, like, his robe. And so they would have him in his robe. And then they'd have him... Uh, they'd, they'd, like, remove him. And then they'd have, like, the background with, like, him in a mirror. And then they have... Like, they remove the mirror, or they remove him in the mirror, but it would be, like, the way they did it to, like, have him invisible is, like, really interesting. Uh, again, I watched um, Dead Meat's Kill Count for this just to, like, get how they did that, and it was really interesting to hear that. Um, the costume design for The Invisible Man was really interesting. I really like this version. I did not like the, like, 2019 or 20 version with... Um, I don't remember who's in it, but it's, like, the modernized version, and I didn't like that movie at all. This one made me, like, really enjoy this this character, um, and, like, just the look of him down there, like, he's just bandaged up, and he's got, like, glasses on, so no one can see that there's nothing behind those, those, like, holes and the bandages, and the scene where he's just, like, they want to see what's underneath there, and, like, you just get a brief glimpse of it, where, like, he's got no... He's, like, eating, but he's got no bandages from, like, here down. And the woman's like, what the heck was that? Um, and when he finally, he's like, fine, you want to see what's underneath there? And he starts taking off his, like, his, like, wrappings. And he's just, like, laughing, just like a fiend, and it's great. Um, I, that Claude Rains in this movie was, like, I... He, that's actually as weird as it may sound it's one of my of like the newest movies that i've seen even though it's such an old movie it's like one of the more memorable like performances just his just laughing and how crazy he is in this movie and the things that he does uh as jack griffin and like how he becomes invisible mixing chemicals with um i think it's called like mitocaine or melocaine something like that i, I don't remember exactly um and it takes all of the color out of things and they tested it on dogs and they became like just white well he uses it and it turns them just invisible so um that's where those were the things i mainly liked about this this character uh the, the actual actor the costume the movie itself but the things I, I do have to say there were some things i didn't really like there's some heavy overacting in this movie and some silliness that if I didn't like the movie so much, it's, like, straight up, like, wow. Like, why are you acting this way? Like, the, this, like, they're putting on a stage play times ten. It's, like, why, like, they really, there's the woman, uh, she's, like, the 
co-owner of this hotel or this bar or ho whatever you want to call it. I don't even remember. Um, the, the room that he's staying in. And she's just going like, like way over the top. Just every scene she's in. Um, it's funny. And I think that in a way kind of adds to it. But it was like, I kind of would have liked to have seen it with just normal acting. And then there's a cop that's just, it's like, can we get the most stereotypical, like, British police officer? And then, like, that's the guy. Like, yeah, he's like, what's going on here? And he walks, he's got this, like, old mustache, and he just looks exactly, and he, he's, he just walks around, like, with the, the cane out, pretending he's, like, hitting someone constantly. It's just, like, hilarious. It's just, I don't know. This movie is funny, and it, I don't know if it was intentionally trying to be funny, but... There's also some really good, like, death scenes in here. Uh, he kills an entire train of people by, like, derailing the train. He sends someone off of a cliff in a car, and they blow up as he's tied them down in the car so they can't do anything. Um, and his even death scene is one of the best parts of the movie, when he finally is, like, shot to death, I believe, or, or something. Um, he, like, slowly turns back visible because the the chemicals in his body are wearing off and you see what he was like as a human and it was really cool and that's actually even though it's an abrupt ending in a way it actually makes sense because from there on like where would you go you just see him as the movie ends as his body reappearing and then it's just like that's the movie but um yeah this is by far my favorite uh creature from the black lagoon i guess i would say is pretty close and i think it's probably the better movie but i i just enjoyed that that performance of Claude Rains is and just him going absolutely like insane and um I found it really interesting that he inspired Mark Hamill's laugh for the Joker and it very much so is similar so um that's my ranking of the uh seven universal movie monsters uh let me know if you know which ones are your favorite give me your rankings and I will talk to you guys soon thanks for watching bye